Okay, our final lesson in this unit is called Markets Not at Equilibrium. And if this was microeconomics, we'd be spending a great deal of time talking about individual markets. Uh, we've spent some time on it here in this course. We've spent a little bit on supply, on demand, on equilibrium, and really have just gotten down the basics of uh, market economics. Um, we do want to spend just one brief lesson here on what happens when markets get out of equilibrium, when they're not working exactly as they should. And one of the most common reasons that markets get out of equilibrium is because governments put them out of equilibrium, uh, often in an attempt to do what they consider to be a good thing for uh, the people of that country. But we want to show you what exactly getting out of equilibrium does to markets. And two of the most common ways this happens are through what are known as price ceilings first. A price ceiling is just what it sounds like. It's a legal maximum on the price at which a good can be sold. So it's the highest price that a good is allowed to be sold for. Why would a government put a price ceiling in place? Well, sometimes governments are concerned that something they think is important for the average person to have has gotten too expensive. And so they put a price ceiling in place to keep that good from being unaffordable to the average person. Is this a good idea? Well, we'll see in a moment. Uh, the opposite of a price ceiling, another uh, example of a price control, is what's called a price floor. And that is a legal minimum on the price at which a good can be sold. Uh, why might the government do that? Well, sometimes governments are concerned that producers are not getting a high enough price in order to continue to produce something that they think is important. And so they raise the minimum price or keep the price from going below a certain minimum so that the producer will continue to produce. Again, is this a good idea? Well, we're going to take a look at this and we're going to do most of this lesson using graphs. Let's take a look first at a price ceiling. Now, a price ceiling works like this. So we have our supply and demand. We'll use ice cream here as our example to make life uh, simple. And You'll notice here our equilibrium price is going to be $3. And there's our price ceiling. Now we've set the price ceiling at $2. Now you'll notice right at the top of the screen there it says a price ceiling that is binding. Uh, we'll sometimes either use the word binding or effective. Now why is this price ceiling binding? Well, it's binding because it's actually going to affect this market. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So we set the price now at $2. Now where does the market want to be if we left it alone? It wants to be at $3. But we force the price to be no higher than $2 because we use this price ceiling. Well, with that being the case, the quantity supply is 75. The amount that us producers are willing to produce is 75. But the problem is that the amount the demanders are willing to to or want to consume is 125, the quantity demand. So with those two things, what we notice all of a sudden is we have 75 that are being supplied and 125 that people want to buy. Well, what do we end up with? We end up with a shortage, in this case, a shortage of 50 goods. That's what happens when we impose price ceilings. Uh, a good example of this uh, is gasoline. Uh, back in the 1970s, um, the governments decided to cap the price at which gasoline could be sold, uh, largely in response to some uh, actions that OPEC had taken uh, to try to force the price higher and to, and to reduce the supply of the good. Well, it seemed like a good idea because, of course, it was, it was trying to keep what the American government considered a fair price for gasoline. But in doing so, they created a huge shortage. And some of your parents may remember long lines at the gas stations back in the 1970s. That's what happens when we get out of equilibrium. We create shortages with a price ceiling. Now, again, we notice that this is what's called a binding price ceiling, or in other words, a ceiling that's having an effect. Let me show you one that's not having an effect. Again, here's our market, and we're going to have a $3 um, equilibrium. But in this case, we're going to set our price ceiling above equilibrium, in this case at $4. Now you'll notice that our equilibrium price and our equilibrium quantity are set at 3 and 100. Well, why is that $4 price ceiling not binding or not effective? 
The reason is, is because if you think about it, a price ceiling is the maximum price that we can charge for a good. Well, where does this market want to be? Equilibrium says it wants to be at $3 and producing 100. So if I say to you the maximum price that you can charge is $4, but you want to be at $3, effectively the market says, who cares? $4 is higher than I want to charge anyway, and so it won't have an effect. So what have we learned here? We've learned that price ceilings have to be below equilibrium in order to actually have an effect. If they're set above equilibrium, then the equilibrium price itself will end up being where the market settles. So let's summarize that. If we have a price ceiling, there's two possible things that could happen. The first, if it is not binding, if it's set above equilibrium, that means that it will not have any effect on the market and the market will just go back to equilibrium. If it is binding and it is set below equilibrium, it will lead to a shortage. And by the way, you see I've used the word effective there. By effective, I don't necessarily mean that it's good or it's bad. What I mean is simply that it's having an effect. So again, price ceilings set above equilibrium have no effect on the market. Price ceilings set below equilibrium lead to shortages. All right, now let's take a look at price floors. Now price floors, we'll recall, are the opposite of price ceilings. Price floors are legal minimums that we can produce. So again, here comes our market, supply and demand. Our equilibrium price is going to be three. And we set a price floor above equilibrium. Well, let's take a look at that. Remember, this is the absolute minimum price that we're allowed to charge. So since we want to charge $3, but the market is only letting us charge four, excuse me, the government is only letting us charge four, then what do we end up with? We end up with a quantity demand of 80, but a quantity supplied of 120. In other words, there's far more supply than there is demand. And of course, if that happens, then what do we end up with? We end up with a surplus. We'll have extra on hand. Um, this often happened with uh, agricultural products. Uh, peanut butter happened to be one that I can remember as a, as a child that there was a price floor set in place. And so farmers would have lots of extra peanut butter that they were producing because a price floor was set in place. And the government would often just buy up all that surplus and then send it off to local cafeterias and schools and we'd get it in big five gallon pails. Um, that's what happens when you put a price floor in place. It creates a surplus. It makes a price that's too high, so producers are happy to produce it, but it's too high for consumers to buy as much as being produced, and so you have a surplus. Now again, this is a price floor that is binding. Well, what's an example of a price floor that is not binding or not effective? Well, Here's our market again, and again, our equilibrium price is three. If I was to set a price floor at, let's say, $2 below equilibrium, well, what's the problem with that? Well, remember, it's the minimum price that we're allowed to charge. The market wants to charge three. So again, what are we really going to say? We're going to say, essentially, we don't care about your price floor because we don't want to charge uh, less than $2. In fact, we want to charge three dollars and so in this case the price floor is not binding or has no effect the price will simply be three dollars and the quantity will be a hundred so again to summarize price floors now when the government imposes a price floor two things can happen first the price floor is not binding if it's set below equilibrium it is binding and it does have an effect if it's set above equilibrium and that would lead to a surplus so one of the funny things about price ceilings and price floors is price floors, in order to be effective, have to be above equilibrium. Price ceilings have to be below in order to be effective. That seems a little odd that the ceilings are below and the floors are in the air, but that's in fact the situation. Price floors set above equilibrium have an effect or are binding and create a surplus. Price ceilings set below are effective and create a shortage. One more example of a price floor. This one happens to be a very uh, common discussion is of the minimum wage and whether or not the minimum wage is a good idea. 
Well, classic economists actually teach us that it's not, believe it or not. Well, why? Well, here's, let's call our market for labor. Labor supply, our workers, and labor demand, the people who want to hire our workers, our companies. Well, there's our equilibrium wage and our equilibrium number of people that we would employ. Well, suppose that instead of doing that, I put in, again, my supply and demand of labor, but I put in a minimum wage. Now, minimum wage is a price floor. It's the minimum price that a worker is allowed to charge for his work. Well, again, by putting in a price floor above equilibrium, what do we create? We create a quantity demand that is less than a quantity supply. And therefore, we end up with a, a surplus of workers, or in layman's terms, we call that unemployment. So one of the things that we know to be true on some level is the more we raise the minimum wage, the more we are likely to create unemployment. Now, the extent to which that happened has been a great debate among economists over the past few years. But for our purposes right now, let's just assume that this model makes a lot of sense. If we put a price floor in place, whatever the reason may be, we are going to create a surplus if that price floor is set above equilibrium. Okay, let's summarize this lesson. Price controls include price ceilings and price floors. A price ceiling is a legal maximum on the price of a good. Uh, an example, by the way, another one, just to give you an idea, is something called rent control. Uh, New York City tried that at one point, um, where they tried to cap the, t the, the amount that a landlord could, could charge for an apartment. Uh, it led to a, a mess. It led to a shortage, as you might expect, of apartments, and uh, it led to many of those apartments not being very well taken care of by their landlords. Uh, so a price ceiling is a legal maximum on the price of a good. And again, rent control is an example. A price floor is a legal minimum on the price of a good or a service. An example is the minimum wage. Okay, that completes lesson 10. Please complete the activities uh, in the rest of lesson 10.